Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope all of you are doing well. So in this video, I will be discussing about Sir Philip Sidney's and his literary criticism. So let's start. So the name of Sir Philip Sidney occurs very frequently in the literary history of Elizabethan age because he exercised a great influence upon the progress of his time. He was born in 1554 in Kent. He was the son of Sir Henry Sidney and on his mother's side nephew of Robert Dudley, the famous Earl of Leicester. His father held many honorable offices under the crown and made his mark in history as Lord Deputy of Ireland. While he was Lord President of Wales in 1564, he sent his son to Shrewsbury School. In 1568, the boy passed from Shrewsbury to Christ Church, Oxford, where he studied up till 1571. From 1572 till his death in 1586, he served as a courtier and diplomat. He traveled in France, Germany, Hungary, Italy, and the Netherlands. He wrote the Lady of May to entertain Elizabeth at Wenstead. He united in his own person almost all the most fascinating qualities whether natural or acquired, nobility of birth, beauty of person, bravery, generosity, learning, and courtesy. Sidney was a many-sided person, a soldier, a diplomat, courtier, prose writer, critic, and poet. Although much concerned with politics, his real interest lay in the, uh, in the direction of letters, and his high position at court gave him the headship of that literary coterie of which both Gabriel Harvey and Spencer were members. He was the most cultured man of the Elizabethan age with many possibilities, but he died very soon. So, Sidney is considered to be the first literary critic in the true sense. He was a poet, soldier, diplomat, multi-talented type of person. And uh, he wrote book for Philip Sidney. Stephen Gosson wrote book for Philip Sidney and Philip Sidney also wrote book for him in his answer. And he has answered all the questions of Stephen Gossin book. Stephen Gossin wrote the book of School of Abuse. And in his answer, Philip Sidney wrote a book that is an apology for poetry uh, or a defense of poetry or defense of poesy. This book is not only the answer to Stephen Gossin's charges against poetry, but it is also widened the scope of English criticism as well. So this book is divided into uh, many objectives. The most important objectives include understanding of poetry, value, features, defending the poetry. He wrote the book An Apology to give the answer of charges made by Stephen Gossin and this book was divided into 91 paragraphs. From 1 to 42 paragraphs, he talks about nature of poetry and its function. From 42 to 55 paragraphs, he talks about significance of poetry and its demerits of poetry. From 55 to 66 paragraphs, he talks about charges against poetry and he answers to it. From 67 to 88 paragraphs, he talks about poetry in contemporary time. And lastly, in uh, 89 to 91 paragraphs, he talks about conclusion, how poetry is significant in society. So the defense of poesy uh, division is in the form of uh, exordium, narration, propostio, confirmation, refutation, digression and priority. So, exordium is an introduction and starting with attention getter. It is something like uh, an essay who grabs the attention of audience and begins in a humorous way. While the second part is narration, the statement of the fact of the case. The aim of poetry is to teach and delight. It is a statement that is based upon fact. In the propostio, uh, this is a thesis or an argument. Sidney refers to the three kinds of poets in this part. In the uh, confirmation part, uh, he uh, talk about arguments that supports the thesis, gives argument that shows superiority of poetry over other disciplines. In the uh, sixth part, that is refutation, sorry, fifth part, uh, that is refutation, uh, he, ans he is answering of argument, Sidney answers all the charges leveled against poetry. In the second last part, that is digression, uh, Sidney deals with the state of poetry, the worth of poetry in his own time. In the last part, priority, it is a conclusion. Sidney concludes with an appeal to poet to write with decorum and restrain and ends with a touch of humor as just as begun. So the Sidney definition of poetry also, he talk about that 
poetry is an ancient text and oldest genre and branch of literature he mentioned the names of plato and aristotle while explaining the significance of poetry and he defines poetry as uh, poetry therefore is an art of imitation for so aristotle terms it in the world of mimesis that is to say a re representing a counterfeiting or figuring forth to speak metaphorically speaking picture with this end to teach and delight he called poetry as speaking picture means recite poetry he agrees with aristotle that it is an imitation in the same definition he talk about the function of poetry as well and the function of poetry according to Phil sir philip sidney is to teach and delight and providing entertainment he also talk about some kinds of poetry as well the first kind is pastoral poetry now what is pastoral poetry uh, it is with the simple life admiration of humble life and abhorrence of tyranny and brutality of the world while the second kind of poetry is allegory it is a sad song or poem that arouses emotions of kindly pity rather than blame for darkness of human kind or miseries of the world the third is comic comic is something that there is an humorous kind of uh, elements are there ridicules imitation of the common errors while the tragedy is something that deals with the uncertainties of human life arouses emotions of pity or fear the lyric is something a uh, sign that all that is wise and worthy and thus enkindles provokes virtue and courage so lyric lyric poem or poetry is the signs all that is wise and worthy and thus enkindles provokes virtue and courage so um, comparison of poetry with other genres he also talk about that he said that poetry is superior to all other genres including history philosophy law and theology because history is restricted uh, and it talks about the example uh, of past and tells what happened while philosophy deals with abstract ideas metaphysics and moralizing deals with uh, mor and moralizing and also deals with vice and virtues means good and bad it tells us about the lack of beauty or style and clarity and uh, but poetry is superior because it teaches delight uh, and combines the percept with example the poet not only shows and tell what virtue but also turns the genesis means knowledge into praxis means performance but poetry basically turns the knowledge into performance so that's why it is more superior and its function is to teach and delight that's why it is more superior the poet by representing ideal characters must lead to virtuous action so that's why it is more superior than other genres sir philip sidney also talk about that Uh, now the charges that is made by uh, uh, Stephen Gossen is basically uh, that poetry is a waste of time. But according to Sir Philip Sidney, it is not the waste of time, but creative use of time. The second charge is that it is a mother of all lies. Uh, but poetry is mother of all knowledge according to Sir Philip Sidney, and it is based on truth. The third charge is nurse of abuse. Sidney's admit that there are some fictional characters that are not good in nature, but the meaning of conveying message is not immoral. the fourth point is uh, that the fourth charge is made by stephen gossen is that plato banished all poets from the ideal state but according to sidney he did not banish poetry plato is not against po poetry but against bad poetry in this way he gave refuting arguments and def defend poetry though he lay their foundation and takes idea from plato and aristotle but he lay very strong or solid foundation but he deduces ideas from aristotle's and plato so a uh, reason of the decline of poetry according to sir philip sidney is that uh, poets of his times are not inspired and they lack passionate spirit and those writing poetry lack knowledge and training they do not have classics as their model and they lack genius to produce genius poets are made not born poets need to be learned and practiced even the fertilest ground must be manured the intricacies of poetry are unknown to them that is the reason of decline of poetry so sir philip sidney also talk about and they, uh, about drama as well and he talks about that drama is divided into uh, two parts that is uh, tragedy and comedy so according to him tragedy should arouse the aristotelian pity and fear it must follow the three unities time action and place there should be no mixing of comedy with tragedy no mingling of horns and pipes with the funeral of king with clown must deal with the fall tyranny to show the triumph of virtue and the comedy side uh, is that the comedy according to sir philip sidney divided into delight and laughter 
and delight is something that lasts possible even without laughter while uh, laughter is something that temporarily tickles it should not cause pain to someone it should not deal with the weakens foibles and follies of human kind with the aim of correcting them so he talks about tragedy and comedy both in the drama so that's all from my side if you have any queries you can ask me in the comment section please like subscribe and share my channel thank you for watching